But we were talking about this at, <laughs> we were talking about this in the masthead at one in the morning two days ago. How the top of the pyramid was a capped with gold. Yeah. Then we got into a little Tesla talk, how Tesla at the World Fair he did the wireless transfer of electricity to the light bulb from a pyramid um, model. You can even get into discussions about Nikola Tesla in the mass dead in the middle of the night. I want, really, I want some really thin golden toilet paper. I'm sure somebody's got that shit. Well, Nikola Tesla said once scientists start focusing on non-physical phenomena, <clears throat> that they would make it more progress in 10 years than they made like in all the previous centuries put together. Yeah. I think that's what happened with the pyramids that like once they really start learning about it cause he had he was like he had those uncontrollable cosmic visions of Egyptian stuff anyway yeah well society you know. hasn't like increased in knowledge they've decreased well, the aliens, they people told got the, blind and they, they forgot that there's such thing as non-physical phenomena. They told the Egyptians how to live and how to do shit and make electricity. And that's all a fucking pyramid was, was a big electrical conductor. And, and then, like... I think there's a little anti-gravity involved somehow. And then there was like a polar shift or whatever happens every 50,000 years. And and pyram years. Maryland, and, Maryland and thinks all, those pyramids all, were to they, keep the wobble. Their, their knowledge is wiped from them and, and they never learned how to use it again. Maryland thought another thing the pyramids did was keep the wobble in, in line so the planet didn't go out of orbit. Yeah. We kept the wobble under. Maybe it was to help it get help it adjust to a polar shift. I don't know. Is it? Are they like little? Uh, what do you call it? They're like famous tire weights. Yeah, counterpoints. <laughs> yeah. Some kind of counterpoint or something. It has something to do with probably higher dimensions. And lower dimensions. Remember the Egyptians wrote the Book of the Dead, so they were into those alternate dimensions. Well, one thing in common about Egyptology and all the religions and stuff, they all have alternate dimensions. Lower, what, le there's the, lower, the lower book, places. There's underworld. That's what the book of the Orantria really gets into. That's all they really talk about. Well, New Ageism believes in it too. It's just yeah. The only thing that makes Islam different it's it's how to make sure you don't end up in those lower realms. That's yeah. what that's what salvation is. It's so you don't your soul doesn't go to somewhere it doesn't want to go. That's, that's like a pretty simple definition of salvation is salvation from the fire <clears throat> or the underworld or whatever you want to call it. <coughs> yeah, I don't want to go there. I'm going to go get Timmy at noon tomorrow. You going to go or tomorrow? I got to be Lincoln and, and Lincoln at noon. You gonna go to the mosque? No. Go Lincoln has a mosque. I think it's like on First Street or something. Yeah. You must not be bored enough. 
Well, I oh, I went to temp I went to Temple Square and I did a little dawa. That's like when you kind of tell them a little bit about Islam. I was pretty bored. But usually, if they find out you were a member and you don't do it anymore, they they ask you, "How did you fall away from the church?" So it helped me like review how I ended up becoming Muslim. Because I, uh, I fell away from the church. When? When I converted to another religion. Oh. Uh, but I don't really think of it as falling away from them. I think of it as being accepted to where I belonged anyway. Who <laughs> tells you you fall away from the church? When I went to Tem- I go to Temple Square, in the yeah. the visitor center. Like if you just hang out in there, they always come up to you and start talking to you because that's their job. To yeah. talk, to do missionary work. Yeah. Why would you still go there? I was doing my missionary work. Oh. Uh, I I was practi- I was practicing my missionary work. Oh. And since, since they're like, since they're already Peter. appointed, they have to talk Peter, to you. Peter appreciates Islam and Mormon territory. Yeah. I see. This is the, like, I've gone in there a few times and kind of, I didn't really get into it, but this time I, like, I went through the whole story and see what the reaction was. <laughs> it didn't go too bad, really. Cause I met this guy. At, this guy was at the mosque. He had he had come from Sudan and married a Mormon, and she had the kid and took the kid and did 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 the Mormon thing. Take the kid, leave leave the guy. Ask for money. Take child to mommy. Leave the man, demand money. It's the Mormon way. You got you got that three step process down now. 